this is the lesson for 3-9 from chapter six. Um, what you're doing today is you're solving systems of equations algebraically, all right? What you're going to have are two equations that you're going to set equal to each other. We're gonna solve for both X and Y, all right? So what you're going to have are two equations that are set equal to the same thing. If you have an equation that says that eight equals 10 minus two, 10 minus two is eight. Well, another way to write eight is also five minus three. So it's not wrong in saying that 10 minus two equals five plus three, because both of those things equal eight. This side equals eight, and this side equals eight. That's sort of what we're doing today, except you're going to have a y equals and a y equals. And then we're going to set those two things equal to each other in order to solve for x. It might seem a little bit confusing, but once we get going, it's not. So when both equations are in the y equals form, notice we have y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 4x minus 7. What we want to do is set the one expression equal to the other. We want to set y equals to y equals. So then you're going to solve the equation for the variable, sub it back in and solve for the other one, and then we're going to check our answer. So this is the typical kind of question that you're going to have today. We have y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 4x minus 7. What we want to do is set both of these things equal to each other. Since they're both equal to y, we're gonna set the one thing equal to the other thing. So we're gonna do 2x plus three equals 4x minus seven. Now we just have an equation that has variables on both sides. Whenever you have letters on both sides of the equal sign, we want to get them all onto one side. I would always work and suggest to work with the smaller of the two letters first. So all that we're gonna do is set the two things equal to each other and solve that equation. So we're gonna do minus two X and minus two X. So we're gonna get three equals two X minus seven. Now it's just a two step equation. We're just solving this for X. So plus seven plus seven. So we get 10 equals two X divide by two, divide by two, we get an answer of X equals five. Now in these, we are solving for both letters. We're solving for X and we're solving for Y. When we set the Y equals to the Y equals, we're gonna solve for X every time first. Now, what we need to do with this X is we need to take and take this X equals five, and either sub it into here for X or here for X. You get your choice. You get your choice which equation you wanna sub it into. You'll get the same answer either way. I like to do whichever one I think looks easier to sub it into. Now, when I see a two X plus three and I see a four X minus seven, I don't know about you, but I'd rather work with plus signs rather than minus signs. So I'm going to take my y equals 2x plus 3. And I'm going to take my 5 and sub it in for x. So instead of 2 times x, I have 2 times 5 plus 3. And now I'm just going to type this directly into my calculator. Or you could do it out by hand. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. So we get y equals 13. So my x value is five and my y value is 13. If you think back to yesterday's problems, we could have graphed these two things. If we graph these two lines, they're gonna cross at the point five comma 13. We're actually going to check our answer. All right, we're gonna check our answer our answer is really that these two lines are crossing at five comma 13, if we are going to graph them. This is your X value, this is your Y value. Remember points are always written X comma Y. In order to check 
your answer, all right? What we're gonna do is take these two values and sub them into the equation. So in our first equation, we have y equals 2x plus three. We're gonna take our x value and take our y value and sub them in and see if it checks. So 13 instead of y equals, equals two times our x value of five plus three. Two times five is 13 plus three, sorry, two times five is 10 plus three is 13. So we end up with 13 equals 13. It checks, that's good. That means we did it right. Now we need to check it in the other equation as well. So we have y equals 4x minus seven. If it checks in this one, we know for sure 100% that our answer is right. So instead of y equals, we have 13 equals. Instead of four times x, we have four times five minus seven. Four times five is 20, minus seven is 13. So we get 13 equals 13. You should always get the same thing on each side of the answer, or each side of the equal sign. So it checked, our answer checked in our first equation, our answer checked in our second equation. Therefore, you know that this answer of five comma 13 is correct. So our X value was five, our Y value was 13. I'm not going to require you to do the checks. The checks are just there if you want to check to make sure that your answer is correct. If you want to make sure that your answer is correct, take your answer, sub it into both equations, and you should get the same number on both sides of the equal sign. Let's take a look at another one. In this one, they're giving you these two equations, y equals 4x minus 9 and y equals x minus 3. What we want to do is set those two things equal to each other. So we're gonna set 4x minus nine equals x minus three. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna solve this equation now. So minus x minus x, remember there's really a one in front of that x. So this is three x minus nine equals negative three. Be careful when you bring that negative three down. Um, then we're gonna solve this two-step equation. So plus nine plus nine. So we get three, three X equals six, divide by three, divide by three, you get X equals two. Take that two and now you have your choice. We can take this two and sub it into here for X, or we can take and sub it into here for X. Whichever one you think looks easier is the one that you should do. I think that I think that this second one looks a little bit easier. So I'm going to sub it into y equals x minus three. So I'm gonna take my two and sub it in for x. So instead of y equals x minus three, I have y equals two minus three. Well, two minus three is negative one. So my x value is two, my y value is negative one. Many times on the Regents exam, they'll have you write your answer as a coordinate, as a point, x comma y. So if you had to do that for this one, you would write your answer as two comma negative one. Again, yesterday you graphed these two things and saw where they cross. Where they cross was your solution. Today we're doing it algebraically by setting the two things equal to each other and figuring out what x is and what y is but it's essentially the same exact thing. You're just doing it a different way. All right, I want you to try this one on your own. All right, try this one on your own. Find both X and Y, set the two equations equal to each other and solve. Go ahead and try this one, please.
It'll give you about 30 seconds more. Solve for both X and Y. So again, you're going to set the two equations equal to each other. So 5x minus 8 equals 2x plus 1. I always like working with the smaller of the two letters first because you work with less negatives that way. So minus 2x minus 2x. So 3x minus 8 equals 1 plus 8 plus 8. It's just a two-step equation now. So 3x equals 9. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 3. Now you have your choice. We could take and sub in that three into either of the axes. You have your choice. I think the second equation looks a little bit easier. If you subbed it into the first one, that's not a problem. I just think that second one looks a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take my three and sub it in for X. So instead of two times X, I have two times three. Two times three is six plus one is seven. So you get y equals seven. So x equals three and y equals seven. Again, on that Regents exam, many times they will have you write it as a coordinate. You would write it as three comma seven, which is x comma y. Sometimes you're going to have fractions, all right? If you have a fraction, all right, we're not actually gonna do this one, just to save a little bit of time. But if you have a fraction, I would change it to a decimal, All right? I would change it to a decimal. Remember, we're not graphing things, so we're solving equations. In equations, decimals are a lot easier to work with than fractions. So top divided by bottom, negative three divided by two, this would really be a negative 1.5x plus four. And if we were solving this one, we would set it equal to 5x minus 9. And then you would just solve it from there. What I would do is I would do plus 1.5x to both sides. Again, just to save a little bit of time, we're not going to actually solve it. Now, you are going to have letters other than x and y. Notice in this one, we have an f equals and an f equals. Well, just like we had y equals and y equals, since we have f equals and f equals, I'm going to set the negative 2g plus 6 equal to 3g minus 34. I'm going to set those two things equal to each other and solve just like we did before. So I'm going to do plus 2g and plus 2g. So I'm going to have 6 equals 5g minus 34. This is just a two-step equation. We're solving for g. So plus 34 plus 34 you get 40 equals 5G, divide by five, divide by five, and we get that G equals eight. Now, again, you have your choice. We're going to take this G equals eight, and we can sub it into here or here for the Gs, right? I think that first one, I think that first one looks a little bit easier, right? Just because it's smaller numbers. So I have F equals negative 2G plus 6. I know that G is 8. So I'm going to have negative 2 times 8 plus 6 equals F. So negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 plus uh, 6 is negative 10. So I get F equals negative 10. So those are our two answers for F and G. What I would like you to do is try this one on your own. All right, this one has A's and C's. Notice that we have A equals and A equals. So you're going to set the 9C plus 20 equal to the C minus four. Go ahead and try this one, please.
So 9C plus 20 equals C minus 4. Remember that whenever you have a letter by itself, there's really a 1 in front of it. So there's really a 1 in front of that C. I would personally do minus 1C and minus 1C first. So 8C plus 20 equals, be careful, you're bringing down a negative 4 because of that minus sign. Minus 20 minus 20. So I have 8C equals negative 24. Divide by 8, you get C equals negative 3. I now have my choice of what I want to do. I can take that negative 3 and sub it into there or take my negative 3 and sub it into there. I think that second one looks easier. A equals C minus 4. C is negative 3, so I have negative 3 minus 4. When I sub it in, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So again, sometimes you are not going to have X and Y. You'll have other letters. Now, the only other type of question that you're going to have is in all the previous questions, we already had two equations set equal to the same letter. We had like a Y equals and a Y equals. Well, sometimes you're going to have to rearrange for Y equals first. Notice that this first equation is set equal to Y already. That's good. We don't have to do anything to it. But the second equation is not in that Y equals form. So we need to rearrange the second equation for Y equals. So the first thing that I would do is minus 2X and minus 2X. Just for consistency purposes, yes, we technically could leave it as 4 minus 2X. But I like to keep it in that y equals mx plus b form just because you're used to doing it that way. So when you're graphing, so I would take and I would switch around the order to be negative 2x plus 4, right? Technically, because we're not graphing anything, you could leave it as 4 minus 2x, but switch it around just for extra practice with that. So now I have my two equations. I have my y equals and my y equals. So now I'm just going to do that same exact thing that we've been doing and set them equal to each other. So we're going to have 3 minus x equals negative 2x plus 4. It's just that one extra step of rearranging it, and then you do the same exact thing. All right? So then we would solve it from there. Let's take a look at another one like that. Now, sometimes both of them aren't going to be rearranged. So, or sorry, sometimes both of them you will have to rearrange. So this one says x equals 3 minus y. Now technically, technically, you could just take this second equation and rearrange it for x and do x equals and x equals. That's fine to do it that way. I just think for consistency purposes, it's better just to rearrange for y equals. Yes, you would only have to rearrange one of them, but sometimes based on the numbers that are in front of the letters, it's easier just to rearrange for Y equals. So if I was going to take and rearrange this for Y equals, I would do minus three and minus three first. So I'd have X minus three equals negative Y. Now be very careful. There's really technically a one in front of that Y. And really technically there's a negative one. When you go to divide, you have to divide, remember, every single term by negative one. There's really technically a one in front of that X. So be very careful. Those cancel out. We end up with just equals Y here. One divided by negative one is negative one X. Negative three divided by negative one is positive three. So I really get y equals negative 1x plus 3 when I rearrange that one. When I go to rearrange the second one, negative 3x plus 5y equals negative 33. When I go to rearrange this one for y equals, I would do plus 3x and plus 3x first. So I have 5y equals... 3x minus 33. Again, you could leave it as negative 33 plus 3x if you really wanted to. 
but just for consistency purposes, I would put it in that y equals mx plus b form. Here's where you need to be careful. Divide by five, divide by five, divide by five. Now, normally you're used to leaving this as a fraction because when we go to graph it, that would be your slope and we want to leave it as a fraction. However, we're not graphing anything. So I would actually take, because we're solving equations, and actually do 3 divided by 5. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6x. Negative 33 divided by 5 is negative 6.6. .6. So I would actually rearrange it to be that. Then you're going to take your two equations that you rearranged and set them equal to each other. So I would have negative 1x plus 3 equals 0.6x minus 6.6. .6, and then you would solve it from there. All right? But you need to be very careful when you're rearranging. Remember, if you have a number in front of your y here, you have to divide each and every term by it. If it ends up being a fraction, I would change that to a decimal right away because you're not graphing. Um, take a look at this one. Go ahead and just rearrange that second equation for y equals. Just rearrange that second equation for y equals. Go ahead and try it on your own, please. Whenever you have a letter all by itself, there's really a one in front of it. So to get that negative one Y all by itself, the first thing that I would do is minus four X and minus four X. So negative one Y. I would take and switch around the order there for, so that the X comes first, just for consistency purposes. If you put negative 14 minus four X, that's technically correct. Here is where you need to be careful. Divide by negative one, negative one, and negative one. So Negative four divided by negative one is a positive four X. Negative 14 divided by negative one is a positive 14. So when you rearrange it, you would get four X plus 14. One last thing, you're not always going to have to rearrange with X's and Y's. You might have A's and B's or something like that. This one specifically says rearrange for B equals Notice that the second equation is already rearranged for B equals. They just wrote it sort of backwards to try and confuse you. But you also have 4A plus 3B equals 27. If we're trying to get that B all by itself, we need to first get this 3B all by itself. Minus 4A minus 4A. So 3B equals negative 4A plus 27. Again, just for consistency purposes, I want to try and put it in that y equals mx plus b form. It would not be wrong, however, if you wrote 27 minus 4a, that would technically still be correct, and you'll get all the right answers. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3 to get this b all by itself. Again, don't put a fraction. I would put a decimal. So this is really negative 1.3 or 3 repeating a plus 9. Again, technically, if you left it as a fraction, that's fine. But when you go to solve it in your equations, you're not going to want to leave it as a 